Welcome to TBK Digital and today we're gonna start an awesome project. We're gonna make our own RGB LEDs for a computer. And the total price will be under 12 dollars or under 12 euros. I wanted to start this project because all the solutions that I found were either super expensive or they added some kind of power pack into your system and I wasn't happy with that. So the item that I used was an RGB LED strip and a multis connector and a controller. I will be going over these items uh, a bit later and I will also leave a link in the description where I bought these items. So the things that you need for this build is a cable cutter and some tin for uh, the soldering iron and of course a soldering iron. I'll also use some other tools later and I will explain why but these tools are the essential ones and that is basically what you need. Now for the Molex connector, it's just a regular 4 pin Molex connector to a SATA power and, and the reason I chose this is because it carries a 12 volt signal and that's compatible with the RGB LED. Now for the controller, it got some different modes with breathing effects, it got speed and color. Also it's compatible with the 12 volt signal from the Molex connector. Also, the connection of the controller fits with the connection of the RGB LED, so we don't have to do anything there. Now for the LED. Of course, this LED is RGB, so you can we can change its colors later on. And also, it's compatible with the signal for the 12 volt from the Molex connector. This is very important, because if this is not compatible, either you won't get any lights, or you may end up damaging something. So if you want to buy all these items on your own at some other place, make sure they're all compatible with each other. Also, I'll leave a link in the description for where I bought them and directly to the different items. I've also been uh, listing the pricing of the different items so you can see what I bought them for and the total price I got them to was 11.97 US dollars. Now, let's start this project. The first thing you're gonna do is take the Molex connector. As you can see, it got four wires. We only need two. So we're gonna cut off the red and the black wire. And you can see it, I will split them up like this. and. The red and the black one that goes together, just cut them off because they only carry a 5 volt signal and we need the 12 volt that's on the yellow wire. And while you're at it, we're just gonna cut off the SATA power connector. Uh, as we don't need that, we're gonna be starting together with the LED later, so just cut that off. And there we go, now we only got the MOLUS connector back and we got the all the four wires on, so uh, we just have to cut off the red and the black wire that goes in the pair, like I said the last time. There you go, and now we got a MOLUS connector with 4 pins, but only 2 cables, so we got 2 pins that are connected to that thing. So I just removed them with the cable cutter, and just pulled them out. They could I couldn't do this on camera because they were real tight, but you got the example. You don't have to remove them, but I think it would look nicer, so I just removed them to make it more complete. Now we're almost done with the MOLUS connector. The only thing we need to do now is to remove some of the protection for the wires at the ends, and that's both for the yellow and the black one. As you can see here, I use a different tool this time. You could basically just use the cable cutter to remove the protection, but mine was just too dull and I ended up cutting the wire every time. You could practically just use a sharp knife or a sharp scissor, just something to get the protection off. As you can see, I use a better time on this. Yeah, and it's just because this item isn't very sharp either, so it just takes some time and I have to use some force. It's much easier if we just could cut down to the wire inside and then you can just pull it off. Now we finally removed the protection and uh, before we begin starting I'm gonna show a little trick. You're gonna take the both ends and you're gonna spin them so you it's easier to control when you're soldering. Most people know this but if it's your first time soldering it's uh, nice just to know and it makes it a bit easier. Now we're almost ready to do the soldering. The only thing we need is the controller, and the controller you don't need to remove anything, it comes as it is, and you can just pull the protection off at the ends, and that's just basically it, and then we can start soldering. And again, I use the spinning trick so I can get a better control of the wires, and I also pull them a bit more apart, and that also makes it easier later on when we're going to do the soldering. Now for the starting process, the first thing I do is that I put a bit of tin on all the wires because then it gets a lot easier later on to put them together. Also uh, remember to have a window open or and do it some place where it can get a messy because it doesn't smell very good and it's probably not that healthy, so just remember that. Also I uh, put a bit of uh, towel paper underneath my starting process because I have experienced once that I dropped a bit of tin and it got on the table and I just couldn't get it off to just keep that in mind. And we just speed up the process as you don't need to watch me do all this work. As it's not that complicated to put uh, tin on the wires. 
Now we're gonna solder the black wires together and then the yellow and the red one should also be soldered together. Now I have put tin on all the wires and it's time to put them together. And when the tin is on all the wires I can just put them together and just heat it up. And then they just fit perfectly together and it just makes it a lot easier. The next one causes me a bit of trouble. So we're just gonna speed up the process a bit more. As you can see the last one here just takes a bit of time. That's because I don't have enough tin on both wires so that they won't uh, get together. Then you just have to add a little more and um, yeah then you gotta get to go. Now when all that's done we should have a models connector that's uh, connected to our controller and that should be working. The last thing I just want to remind you of is that the parts where that we soldered together is still conductive and if they touch something that's conductive it may interrupt the flow. So what I did that I just put a normal piece of tape around it so it wouldn't spread and touch all the things inside the computer. Now this is where you're smarter than me and don't use regular tape but use something non-conductive tape. I used regular tape, it works but I wouldn't recommend it so be smarter. Now again I will just speed up the process till I've put tape on the both wires. Now we're all finished with the moldix and controller part so now that's done we can basically just put in the LED in the PC and get some light. But before we do that we need to cut off the appropriate length of the LED so it can fit inside the computer. And the way you do that it th is that you just cut along this line, use a scissor or something and that's it and that way you don't damage anything. On the back of the LED there's a sticky surface, just remove the protection and you can just put it on. As you can see here I put my LED strip around the side panel. I thought would this would make for a good, good look because I can see the LED and I get light all around my case. But of course you can put the LED anywhere you like. The downside to putting the LED around the side panel is if you have to do it in a square as I did, you can see the corners get a bit little bit tricky, And but yeah, they stick so that works. Also the sticky surface on the LED isn't that great so at the end where I got the controller I put a piece of tape to hold it in place because the sticky material isn't strong enough to hold the controller to. Now everything is in place and we just have to put in the models connector. Now it's finally time. We put the LED into the controller and the controller is set to the Molex power and we will have some light. Just be aware, if you put the RGB LED strip into the controller the wrong way, you won't have any light. But then you just take it out and turn it around and put it in again and you will have some light. And now it's time to sit back and enjoy your result. As you can see here, this is my rig and I chose the blue color. The downside by doing it this way is that the controller is in inside your PC and you can you can't change the lighting on the fly with a controller or anything. But still there isn't any power breaks inside your PC and I think it just looks a bit neater. And still you have the option to change the lights if you want to, but you should also have to take the panel off. But yeah, that's just the way it works. And now on the positive side. I'm a bit surprised of how good the controller actually is. It got a tons of modes a lot of calls and a, a lot of options you can choose between. And also the LED isn't that bad, it actually makes a real good light. So I got no complaints there. Now that's all for this video, I will just go through some of the colors so you can have a look at them. And also if you like the video, uh, remember to subscribe or leave a like if you want to see more videos like this. And also check out some of our other videos, I did a review of the Dell Latitude 2-in-1. Uh, and also uh, check out the review of this microphone that I use in this video actually. Or maybe check out the whole page and hope you like it. See you.